Does slimming world work? Does the slimming world diet help you lose weight and keep it off for good? I'm Harry and I'm an emotional eating and diet coach and an axe therapist. So I'm here today to have a little chat to you about your decision to join or continue with the Slimming World Diet. So first thing, this video might come across negative to some people, and I'm gonna explain why as I go through the video, but also, if you are doing Slimming World and it's working for you and you're happy, continue doing it. I'm not gonna ever stop someone doing something that they feel is working for them. I just wanna point out to people that are starting the diet or maybe have done the diet many times, why it doesn't work for a lot of people and the things you might miss when you are doing the diet to help you make better choices. So one of the reasons I'm doing this video is that many of my clients, many of the women that come to me to get help with their weight loss and emotional eating, they have done Slimming World, not once, not twice. They've done it for 10, 15 and even 20 plus years and it's caused them so many issues. Apart from that, if you scour the internet, there's so many forums where people speak out about their experiences within Slimming World and they are highly negative. Now, before you point out all the thousands of positive reviews, I just want to make a point on this, which is very important. So Slimming World has around a million members. And if you think about how many people are doing reviews, let's say for example, there are 10,000 positive reviews. And this is just an example. 10,000 is 1% of a million. So if there were 10,000 positive reviews, that would mean that 99% of people are failing because although 10,000 looks a lot, within the context of a million, it's not at all. So don't fall for the huge amount of positive reviews you may find. Get a balanced opinion and really form the idea yourself based on what you learn from both sides. It's very important to do that. And these things that I say about Slimming World are not just from my own clients, they're not just from other people on the internet, but it's also backed up by scientific studies as well. So there was a study done in 2007 that showed that after two years, only 20.5% of members maintain their goal weight. And after five years, that dropped to only 16.2%. So very few people that are doing the diet actually maintain their weight long term. So just to back this up further, I've actually had conversations with people who have won prizes with Slimming World for losing weight, but then subsequently they put all the weight back on. So something is going wrong here. And just to reiterate again, I'm here to help people. So if you're getting results and you are happy with Slimming World, then that's great. But for all those people that are not and have struggled and are suffering with other issues and is totally confused, I'm gonna explain in this video why Slimming World doesn't work for so many people. So I'm gonna base this video on two things. Number one, the weight loss side of Slimming World. And number two, the disordered eating in the form of binge eating and emotional eating side that is often created by the way Slimming World works and all the mental health issues as well. So first of all, the consultants. So Slimming World is run by consultants and these consultants go through some training, which is often a few days, compared to years for a nutritionist or dietitian. And this is a red flag straight away, just in terms of the knowledge and being able to help people. These consultants often back up their knowledge by watching social media videos and learn a lot of nutrition myths, which the average person is susceptible to believing. So without the proper knowledge and science-based training, it can be very hard to cut through a lot of these myths and misinformation around diet. And as a lot of these consultants have been previous members themselves, they often struggle with their own weight, which again is another indicator that the diet just doesn't work long term. And someone that hasn't mastered something themselves should not be teaching other people, in my opinion anyway, a method to lose weight. So this is what one lady said about her consultant in terms of putting weight back on and actually developing behaviors that are very negative in terms of mental health and disordered eating. And another thing, this doesn't apply to everyone, but because the consultants are often very focused and 100% believing in how Slimming World Diet works, when you don't get results, it's often blamed on you rather than the actual diet. And this can often lead to a lot of feelings of guilt, shame, and inadequacy. 
And this is what one lady said about this because she didn't want to feel the shame going to that meeting and not having lost weight that week. And another really important thing to point out is that because weight is a very important metric and focus with Slimming World Diets for measure of progress, a member could be doing really well, but because the scale might show a gain that week, they're left to feel like they've done something wrong without any reason. The consultants often fail to educate members of Slimming World sufficiently on what weight gain actually means. Have they made progress? Have they not made progress? Is it water weight? Is it fat weight? And what should an appropriate reaction be in terms of feeling, but then subsequent behaviors? Whereas a lot of people are left feeling like there's something wrong and then go and self-sabotage their progress. In terms of members as well, and the results they or you may get, we have to consider personality type. So a type A personality that deals very well with challenges, likes goals, and is very good under pressure may do very differently to a type B personality where they are not so good with change, they don't deal so well with stress, and they're very feeling orientated. When I think about this, a type A personality may be able to endure the diet for longer and get better results to show in their review than the type B. And so you have to really consider this both in terms of who is doing the diet, when are they giving the review, and actually what happens after as well. Because then a type A personality without a clear goal, without strict rules and consistency, may then find it very difficult. So these are very important things to think about. I'm actually really interested to know what type of personality you have. So if you know, pop it down in the comments for me. If you don't, I'll link to um, a quick test you can do where you can actually find out. And then tell me in the comments below. And before I go on, quickly pause the video and I want to ask you if you have enjoyed this video so far, consider subscribing. It not only helps you see more videos that I produce, but also helps other people because it helps the YouTube algorithm. So if you haven't done already, you can click the button below. So the first big mental health thing I want to bring up is around self-worth. And Slimming World, the Slimming World diet, is very achievement results based rather than action or effort based. And having something achievement based where you can't control the outcome, you can't control when you step on the scale, what the number says, is prone to affecting your self-worth. Whereas something that is effort-based is more self-worth supporting because you know when you put 100% effort in, you feel fulfilled for doing that and when you're rewarded for that versus the outcome which you have a zero control over. So when we base things around achievement or what you have, then it becomes very self-worth focused. And this is similar to schools where children are praised on their results versus the effort they put in. We all know it should be the effort that's focused on rather than the actual results they get. Not everyone's going to get great results every time, but you can always feel good for the effort you put in and building that habit around applying yourself as much as possible. So we really want to get away from this mindset of your worth is based on how you look, your weight and the results you get. This one lady said, I had to lose every week, otherwise I was a failure. So not only did she feel like a failure, but she applied it to identity as well. I am a failure. And the result of not feeling worthy can induce loads of unhelpful feelings and behaviours, such as body image distortion, low self-esteem, people pleasing, worry, rumination over thoughts, and loads of these behaviours, which then cause a lot of stress and overwhelm because it causes you to overthink things. And how have you probably accidentally learned to deal with the stress and overwhelm that this overthinking does to you through food, right? treats and nice food. So you get urges and cravings and then you end up emotionally and binge eating. And then that also then links to the cycle of guilt and it becomes a whole circle of events where you feel bad about yourself and then how do you deal with that? Probably similar things. If not, other unhelpful behaviours like drinking, some people drugs, shopping, all these kind of things to give you that short term release. And some people go to extreme measures to make sure they are losing weight every week because they want to avoid the judgment and the feelings that come with it. Let me read this one to you. I've stopped eating at 10 p.m. day before and neither ate nor drank until 7 p.m. weigh in the next day. I find I can manage fasting no problem and the most extreme version of the above involved me getting up on weigh day, having a morning drink and then not eating or drinking a thing. 
At 4.30, I would do a 5K run. And then 5.30, I would do a 45 minutes kettlebell workout. And then only drink after the weigh-in at 7 p.m. That is like crazy extreme behavior to avoid those feelings and show progress. And some people would then congratulate that person and reinforce that behavior because they got results and they would feel good about it. And you can see how these behaviors then develop and continue. And also the pressure on other people. They may ask, oh, how did you keep losing weight? What are you doing? And this person might tell them and then they imitate these behaviors. So there's this huge environment where pressure induces these very negative behaviors. So now on to the Slimming World diet. So most people know that the Slimming World diet is based around counting points and counting sins. Now, this is what we call rules-based dieting. And rules-based dieting is basically a method to make it as simple as possible for you to follow. So creating rules. I'll just give you some examples of rules that different diets may have. So labeling foods as good and bad, things you can have, things you can't have. Labeling times of day, so you can't eat after 6 p.m., things like that. It's telling you you can eat carbs, but not fat, or fat or not carbs. Or setting a points target, a calorie target, sins targets, things like that. So those are examples of rules. And they make diets very black and white, which in the very beginning makes them easy to understand, but it's what actually makes them fail in the long term. So it's important to understand that rules are arbitrary and completely made up. They make you feel boxed in, creating imaginary boundaries around yourself, where if you cross them, you feel like you've failed. They cause overthinking, overanalyzing, and extra stress. And they ultimately make dieting harder to maintain long term and they often make you feel like you are a bad person if you break them. So those who watch my videos know that I love analogies. So I mentioned this kind of imaginary box that you create around yourself when you follow diet rules. So let's talk about this. When you are following rules, your brain is kind of switched on to always check to see if you are crossing that boundary. And this takes energy even if you're not aware of that. But there's this background stress where your brain is always asking yourself, have you crossed the line? Have you crossed the line? Have you crossed the line? Have I gone over? Have I gone over? And remember, this is an imaginary line where you're creating a good and bad or right and wrong kind of mindset. That's why we call it black and white. So it's the same as walking on a slack line. You might have seen these in the park where people tie a piece of rope between two trees. Now, if I place this slack line on the ground, or maybe tied to the trees a very small distance off the ground, and I say to you, step on that slack line and walk between these two points, it's let's say five, six meters. What do you do? You focus on the other side, you put your arms out, and then you head across, and you do your best. Now, if I then take that same slack line, six meters long, and put it 30 meters, in the sky, what happens? Your focus totally changes because you've changed the risk because you've created this boxed in feeling of, my God, what if I fall? What if I wobble? What if I die? All these things. So your focus completely changes from walking across the other side and doing what you need to be doing, all the behaviors, to looking down. And then what happens if you look down, you often then fall off. So it's similar with dieting. When you create this imaginary box, the tighter you feel in, similar to the high slack line, the more chance you're gonna be sort of switched on for the what ifs, what if this, what if that, what if I go over, what if someone gives me something to eat, what if I don't know what to eat, what if I run out of food, what if I don't lose weight, what if this doesn't work? And this completely consumes your mind. You may have experienced this, let me know in the comments if you have, all because of these made up rules which don't actually mean anything. So the result of diet ruled is this black and white thinking of, oh, I've gone over my points or I've had too many sins, so I'm not on the diet anymore. So I'll just make the most of today and start again tomorrow or on Monday. So there's nothing in between. You don't do the diet to your best standard. You're just either totally on it or totally off it. And this inconsistency leads to inconsistent results. And also as a result of this, you can label yourself as a good or bad person of, I'm good when I'm following the diet and I've been bad today because I haven't followed the diet. I often hear this one as well. And also really importantly, it takes energy to do all this thinking, the what ifs. And this is very overwhelming, leading back into what I said before. If you've accidentally taught yourself that food is a quick and easy way to change the way you feel, then you're gonna get urges and cravings for food. And then you end up probably sabotaging your progress as well by binge eating. 
And this constant on and off the diet can lead to you feeling like a failure because of how we sometimes generalize things as people. So I'll just give you an example. Back when COVID was a thing, how many people did you hear say, I've had a really bad year? Now, is that true? Did everyone have a very bad year? Or is it bad moments within that year which had scattered good moments and scattered bad moments? Probably that latter, right? The whole year, 365 days of it, was probably not bad. Now, the same thing with failing on a diet. So if you have some bad moments, it can turn into a bad day. That bad day can then often be labelled as a bad week if you had a few of them across the week. And then it can become, oh, I've had a bad month because I had a few days off on several of the weeks. And then this can lead into, oh, I'm a failure because I failed on the diet. And it goes away from your behaviours to your identity. So you start saying, I'm not enough. I am a failure. I'm not worthy. So can you see how these behaviours start linking into how you feel about yourself? And again, going back into changing the way you feel, if you accidentally learnt that food is a quick way to do that, your body is looking out for you, so it will give you those urgent cravings to try and make you feel better. Diet rules can also destroy confidence, let me explain why. Number one, you don't learn to be able to think for yourself, and number two, you lose touch with your body's natural hunger cues. Like I said, following rules makes you feel boxed in and you're either totally on the diet or totally off the diet. Now, how often does your day go as planned? Life is unpredictable, right? So if one thing throws you off and you feel like, oh, I'm not following the diet anymore, I may as well have the day off, how consistent are your results gonna be? So often falling outside these boundaries that the diet creates make you feel like you failed when you haven't, right? So going 1% off what you're meant to be doing, does that mean you failed? No, not at all. But that 1% often makes you go completely the opposite of, oh, I'm off the diet now. So ironically, it pushes you to the 100% off, even if you're only 1% away from being perfect. So this is diet-induced self-sabotage in action. You could have been doing really well and just like a tiny little bit off perfect, but because the rule said you were not on the diet anymore, or have gone over what the boundary was, then you feel like, oh, what's the point? I've gone off what the actual rules are, so I'm off the diet today. When I teach clients, it's all around this grey mindset of you do the best you can in the moment with what you have, and there's no on the diet, off the diet. And learning to think for yourself, because learning to think for yourself, making mistakes, and learning for next time is what builds this resilience and confidence around food because then you know you've made a decision you've taken action and you made a choice around it and learned something and so you can work in this grey area of good enough and part of building confidence is taking action and proving to yourself that you can do something rather than let's say outsourcing the decisions to the diet so following the rules that someone has given you rather than your own thinking which is very important and when you stop thinking for yourself and rely on something external like a diet plan to dictate your thoughts you lose trust in yourself and this can spill over to other areas in your life i've often spoken to people that because they don't trust themselves anymore they don't speak up in meetings they don't get themselves hard. They miss out on promotions. So then they miss out on financial gain. So this thing is bigger than just weight loss. It can spill over into the whole of your life. And because counting points and counting sins on the Slimming World diet means you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as it's fitting in with the amount, then you lose the ability to eat intuitively. You lose the ability to listen to your natural hunger cues. And this can lead to disaster when you're on one of those days where you're off the diet, because if you lose the ability to listen to your hunger cues, your body's gonna be like, ooh, let's just make the most of this, let's have this and this and this, because we're gonna be back on the diet tomorrow or Monday or whenever it is. So yeah, just make the most of it now. And you're able to eat a lot more because you're not listening to those signals. And this is something that I used to do when I emotionally ate as well. I learned to eat so much because I wasn't listening to my body. It was dictated by that emotional eating. And this is what one lady said about it. I began eating everything in science and with no rules to follow, I felt out of control, often eating 5,000 calories in one sitting until I passed out in a daze. How crazy is that? And diet rules can also induce fear and anxiety. I had a client who genuinely felt anxiety over buying a banana 
because she'd done keto in the past. This rules-based dieting is very negative. And this goes back to the slackline analogy. When you feel boxed in and those rules are too rigid, your brain starts alerting you to it. And then you get that fear and anxiety around what you're doing because what if, what if, what if it goes wrong? What if it doesn't work? What if I put on weight? What if this is not what I'm meant to be doing? What, what if, what if, what if? And this is what causes a lot of stress and overwhelm. So one lady said, not only did I find it impossible to maintain my new weight, but I also had a newfound anxiety around calorie counting, cooking and eating out. And this all links into often as well, Slimming World members want fast weight loss. It's because they are suffering from a number of things like low self-worth, not being happy. So it's that mentality of, I want the weight off as fast as possible. So this often creates behaviors which unfortunately end up self-sabotaging their own results. For example, going more extreme when they don't lose weight one week. And Slimming World does nothing to address this issue of low self-worth and loving yourself before you actually start losing weight. And there's often this cycle of my weight went up, I felt bad, I felt stressed and tired of the diet. It's not working, so what's the point? I'll just give up now because yeah, why should I do this? End up having a binge, feeling even worse, and then, oh, what's wrong with me? Why did they do that? I put on even more weight now. I need to do way better. Let's get back on it and start the diet again. And this cycle can go on and on and on. That's why some of my clients previously had dieted for 15, 20 plus years. So Slimming World, although it claims to help a lot of people, the overall diet and plan it offers is very poor. It lacks a lot of things like support for learning how to love yourself and have high self-worth. So starting from a good place, it lacks the ability to give you a diet that is structure based, allows you to think for yourself, listen to hunger cues rather than have these strict and rigid rules which it creates. And this is what leads to all these things that I mentioned. Number one, people putting weight back on. Number two, these behaviours that people have to try and show fast weight loss, to try and avoid feeling embarrassment in front of others, and the subsequent emotional eating that can result from it as well. And as a side note, it doesn't give you any tools to fix emotional eating either. It just gives you the diet to follow, which a lot of people end up manipulating to be able to eat the food they want. This is what one lady said. The community itself was quite toxic and reinforced disordered eating. Everything was about tricking the system and big losses each week. And for me, that's very sad that these people are having these experiences. And that's why I wanted to highlight all these things in this video. So if you have struggled with weight loss and you want some help, I'm going to pop into the description below all the different ways I can help you. Some of them are free. Some of them are my paid services. And I'm also always here as well for a quick chat about any questions you may have. So for now, if you haven't subscribed, do so below and I will see you in the next video.